Today we've got lots of updates once again. We're going to talk about the Refer a Friend program, a little bit more information about the drink packages, then hopefully we can put that to rest. We've also got information on another cruise line increasing their prices. We're going to talk about Alaska 2025 and another partnership that Princess has. Just so much to talk about and even more than that. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips and today is Thursday. It is August 3rd of 2023. I would like to start off by inviting you to please subscribe to our channel. Hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't obligate you to anything, but I would really love to have you join me here every day while we talk about cruising updates and everything that we enjoy about cruising. In addition to that, if you learn anything, if you enjoy our updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up as well? That really helps us, so thank you very, very much. I want to start off really quickly here with yesterday I talked to you about the Refer a Friend program. It had disappeared from the Princess website. Today it is back on the Princess website. They have rearranged some of the... Um, things that they have listed at the bottom of the princess.com on that very first page, that home page there. When you scroll to the bottom, you'll see the columns of different topics of things you can read about, information for you, things that connect you with what you need for your cruise. The Refer a Friend program is back there. Now, in addition to that being there, we've got a Let's Go family member who let me know that they talked to someone at Princess and said that if you are going to do that Refer a Friend program, that your friend that you refer is going to have to um, acknowledge and say that they will visit with a princess vacation planner as part of that um, process of getting that $25 of onboard credit. So be aware of that and do, and I want you to tell anybody that you refer, if you are helping them and like we're having the, a travel agent help book them, then they can still do that. They are not obligated to book with a princess vacation planner. I want to say that I know that there are a lot of amazing princess vacation planners. There's a lot of lousy ones. There's a a lot of really great travel agents out there and there's a lot of lousy ones. It's the same thing with everything in life but I just want to make sure that people know that they can book with who they would like to. You're not obligated just because you are referred and the Princess Vacation Planner talks to you, you're not obligated to book through them. I feel like um, travel agents everywhere would want you to know that. So um, that's the update on the Refer a Friend. So let me know. I saw a comment or two of people saying that it was on the app. I have updated my app and I can't find it anywhere on the app. So if anyone can see it on the app, please take a screenshot and send it to me. Um, I don't know, perhaps you can see things, to, well always, you can see different things on the app when you're actually on board a ship. And clearly I'm not on board a ship right now, but I'll let you know what I see new there the next time I am on a princess ship. Now really quickly, Yesterday, as I was reading to you what it says in the app under the um, package heading about the, um, I read to you yesterday what it said about the plus package. Someone was kind enough. Thank you. You all are wonderful support and it helps all of us. Someone sent me the screenshot of what it says for the premier package. So let me read that to you super fast. It says it includes specialty coffees and teas, hot chocolate, water, smoothies, premium cocktails, wine and beer up to $20 each, comma, 15 beverages per day. So the way that they have it worded, it does sound like all of that up to 15 beverages per day. Honestly, I don't think it is. I think that it is um, a limit of 15 alcoholic beverages per day. If anyone notices anything else different when you're sailing, would you please let us know? They also then say unlimited soda, juice, and the bar and tips, um, unlimited juice, uh, sorry, unlimited soda, comma, juice bar, and that the gratuities are included. Just a reminder that you don't have to pay gratuities on anything that is included in your package there. So um, once again, it looks like canned soda is available. So that's awesome. Now, um, another update for you and from another Let's Go family member, and this would have to do with having that Plus or Premier package, something we didn't even know about until now. So we are used to the Premier dessert, the premium desserts being those ice cream creations that they make, and they're going to apparently be getting a little bit smaller, but that is what was advertised when they introduced um, that as a perk for the Plus and Premier packages. Well, it turns out they've got something else, so let me know if you see this or anything else that is termed a premium dessert when you're on your cruise. 
So our Let's Go family members just got off of a cruise and she said that she was at the International Cafe and she saw three big beautiful cakes in three flavors in the case. So like we always do at the International Cafe, the International Cafe is included, it's complimentary. She asked for a slice and the server said, the, wait, the um, crew member there said, do you have the plus package because this is a premium dessert? And she didn't, so she didn't have one. Now, I my guess would be that you could probably pay for it if you didn't have a package, but I was not aware that they were having cakes in the International Cafe or anywhere else on this ship as part of those premium desserts. So if everyone will keep their eye out, I will look when I'm on the Emerald Princess in September and see if that's an option. We were just on the Island Princess. There is no International Cafe, so of course we didn't see that. But I'm really looking forward to hearing if they're adding more options than just those ice cream desserts. I actually think it's a good idea if they're adding more options. But um, I hope that since they're offering that, they will also kick up their desserts a little bit that they offer to everyone on the ship. I have really noticed, you know, um, and this is going to tie into another question I'm going to answer that someone asked. Um, I have really noticed with Princess that right when the restart started, their desserts were very similar to how they were before the whole COVID shutdown occurred. But as time has gone by, they are not the same as they used to be. They're not as delicious. They're not made with the same ingredients. It's very different. So um, hopefully, if they're going to offer these premium desserts in other um, ways, hopefully they'll get a little bit better with their other desserts as well. Now, another thing that I think um, would be really interesting, especially for our Let's Go family members and anyone who cruises with Princess that live in the LA area, um, Yesterday on August 2nd, Princess announced a new partnership that they have with the Los Angeles Rams. And what Princess um, is going to be the official cruise line of the um, and vacation partner of the Los Angeles Rams. The Princess Cruises will enhance Rams home games by con combining the thrill of the game with the excitement of travel. Princess will activate Princess will activate during Rams home games throughout the stadium on iconic infinity screen. That's what it says. So apparently um, the princess logo will show up. I don't know if they're going to show sailings of the ship sailing or what they're going to do. So those of you who happen to go to a Rams home game there, will you let us know here? Gordon, I'm going to start that part again. So yesterday on August 2nd, Princess announced a new partnership that they have got. Uh, Princess has become the official cruise line vacation partner of the Los Angeles Rams. So what Princess Cruises is going to do is they are going to, quote, enhance Rams home games by combining the thrill of the game with the excitement of travel. Princess will activate during Rams home games throughout the stadium on the iconic infinity screen. So my guess is you're going to see the princess logo up there. Maybe you'll see some of their little short clips of ship sailing. Those of you that get to go to a Rams home game, let us know what that looks like. In addition to announcing that partnership um, on Tuesday, August 1st, um, the Rams and Princess Cruise Line joined together to recognize a Los Angeles-based Fisher House at the Rams training camp in Irvine, California. John Paget, the president of Princess, presented the Fisher House Foundation, which provides much-needed services and support to veterans and their families with a $5,000 donation and awarded free cruises to two military families. So it sounds like Princess is trying to do a little bit more to get the word out that they are sailing from Los Angeles. Um, I like that the headline of the press announcement said that um, um, Princess Cruises is Los Angeles's hometown cruise line. So, and they are sailing from there a lot more since COVID. So that's an exciting thing as well. And you know, I love, honestly, it's wonderful that they have cruises sailing from Los Angeles. It's so handy for everyone who lives in the Western United States. It's closer to get there. And especially for people that live in the Los Angeles area, you can just drive over and get on a cruise ship. Sounds lovely. Um, yesterday, um, I mentioned, <laughs> I call myself the premier princess vacation planner because um, I know princess so well. And seriously, um, one of you, one of our Let's Go family members said, since you know princess so well, do you know why their food is deteriorated so badly? So I always say that food is very, very subjective. 
I've said that a lot of times uh, as we started off our cruise on the Island Princess. We had a dinner that was not great at all. A Let's Go family member came on our live and they had making a different dinner selection and said, oh, it was really good. And so after that, I just decided to say, you know what, it's fine. They're still feeding us. Everything is okay. But truly, there is a change in cruise line food. And I honestly think that we have seen it across the board um, since it's not only since the restart after COVID, but as um, food prices have gone up so much, as we have proceeded forward and the cruise lines find themselves where they are today with trying to make money, trying to service their debt and everything that goes with that. Truly, the reason that food is not what it was before the pandemic is due to cost. I am sure of it because everything costs significantly more and the cruise lines are in a position that they are trying to keep the cruise fares to a point where people will want to cruise, but at the same time provide an experience that people will enjoy. And they're trying to do it with the food that will make everyone happy. But I honestly don't think that with where they stand now and how much they are charging for cruise fare, I don't think that they can afford to make the dishes with the cuts of meat and all of the ingredients and everything that they had before, like they did before. It's just part of the change that's going on. We have good friends that just got off a Norwegian cruise um, over in the Mediterranean. She said the food was not good. They lost weight, <laughs> but they had a fabulous cruise. They had the very best time. Everywhere that they went was beautiful. They had an extraordinary cruise. And so as we think about the changes that are going on with food, it's just where we are today. Like when we go to the grocery store here, you have to decide what you're going to pay for. And especially if you have... Um, X number of dollars. If you don't have X times the rate of inflation, you know, that how much everything has gone up, you've got to make some choices. And that's truly, I believe, where the cruise lines are right now. I want to know what you think. So would you put that in the comments below? That'll really help us out. Um, now, along with that food, I wanted to let you know that Holland America, and here we go, this is part of it, Holland America has announced that they are increasing the cost for some of their specialty dining. Clearly, it's because prices are going up. You might recall that the Crown Grill is now $39. It used to be $29. And um, things are going up. So on Holland America, these changes are going to take effect on September 1st. Alrighty. So lunchtime at the Pinnacle Grill is going to increase from $15 per person at lunch to $19 per person. Dinner is going to go from $39 a person up to $46 per person. The cost for dinner at Tamarind, the Asian restaurant, is going to go um, from $29 up to $35. And dinner at the Brasserie, um, Rudy Cell de la Mer, uh, will cost $50, $5 a person now. That used to be $49. So everything is going up. Clearly, in their specialty restaurants, they are trying to keep... Um, the same level of food that they have served historically. And so prices are going up. Um, there, to me, there's you know always a good and bad with that. You think, well, would I rather have prices go up and have that food? Or would I rather hold them steady and not be quite as nice as food? Put that in the comments below as well. Okay, I don't know that there's a right and a wrong to that. It's just a personal taste thing. Let's move on and talk about princess prizes. I let you know that the terms and conditions on the page on the princess website that talked about the terms and conditions. It ended on July 31st. So we've been in limbo here for a few days, but they have extended the time for um, the terms and conditions. So now it runs through October 31st of 2023. I am actually wondering if Princess is just going along, seeing how profitable the Princess Prizes is and how much people enjoy it and whether they think it's worth it to still keep running it. So clearly they're committing to at least doing Princess Prizes through October 31st first for everyone that enjoys it. Thought I would let you know that there's lots of different things that you can win and you do this by clicking on your, there's a little um, place to click on your stateroom door on that little screen there that lights up when you come and it unlocks the door. Uh, your medallion unlocks the door. There's a place to click. So um, you can win um, a bouquet of flowers, a medallion accessory, a $200 FE gift certificate, $25 of onboard credit. Um, Australians can earn different amounts of onboard credit based on, you know, the currency differences. You can win a wine tasting for two, chef's table di dinner for two, um, a good spirits mixology ex experience, the chef's ultimate pizza making experience, entertainment enthusiast 
entertainment enthusiast pass, a sanctuary experience for two, a day of relaxation and rejuvenation that would be in the spa as well, commemorative artwork from the cruise, a seven-day cruise for two in a balcony cabin, the ultimate jewelry FE experience, which is worth $25,000, and finally, a seven-day um, cruise a year for 10 years. How fun would that be to win? So that's part of Princess Prizes. And we have had, um, I think it's up to four Let's Go family members um, win the seven-day cruise. So I'm really excited. People are picking fabulous cruises for it too. Um, yeah, it's, I'm just really excited for everyone. Now, um, really quickly, two things. I'm going to tell you just a little bit here about Alaska that I think is crucial because Alaska opened up today, August 3rd, for everyone to book. Yesterday it was available just for elites, but today everyone can book. And you know what? Some of those cruises are really filling up fast. So um, tomorrow or someday soon, we'll see how the news goes. I'll tell you a little bit more about the different itineraries that, that are available, but you can see them on princess.com now. You can look at Alaska 2025. Really important for you to know is I know that some of these cruises were going to be very, very popular. I have not figured out Alaska 2025. Truly, it's because um, I have some people that would love to do a cruise tour. I'm trying to figure out timing when Gordon could take that time off of work. Plus, they are expensive. And um, believe it or not, when we go, we have to pay for it too, of course. So I'm trying to decide what will work with our budget. So hopefully I'll make that decision really soon. But in the meantime, um, I did take out group space on the fantastic 16-day voyage that is going to be going round trip from Los Angeles, okay? So like I said, she sails, um, the Grand Princess sails on August 30th of 2025, 16 days round trip from San Francisco. You end up going to Juneau, Skagway, Ketchikan, Glacier Bay, Icy Strait Point, and I believe Sitka. Those are the places that it goes. And I have some group space because I figure it's going to sell super fast. So if you book that cruise with me, then you're going to get extra onboard credit. All right. Um, and I have had someone book. And so I can't remember if I even told her, but um, I just have to call Princess and um get that booking in and, and they will get the extra on board credit. So putting that out there for you. Also, um, they've got a May 6th sailing that is going to also be on the Grand Princess and they are calling it the 17 day ultimate Glacier Bay. And so it goes to 10 ports of call and three days of glacier viewing. How cool is that? So, um, so along with the glacier viewing days, you get to go to Wrangell, Sitka, Valdez, Haynes, Icy Strait Point, Anchorage, Skagway, Juneau, Ketchikan, and Victoria. So that is going to be an extraordinary cruise. So I wanted to make sure that Let's Go family members, if that sold super fast, would have the option to book as long as I have space left. And then finally, um, there's going to be a 22-night solstice cruise. Oh, I would go on that if we could. Uh, Gordon just can't take that much time off work, but I want to make you aware of it. It's going to sail on June 6th of 2025. So I have group space on that as well. It goes to 11 ports, four days of glacier cruising. Like what more could you ask? And it's over the solstice when, um, you know, the summer solstice. And so what a special time to be on board, the longest day of the year. Um, wanted to let you know that these are options that are out there. Um, I'm going to talk to you, when I talk to you about the, uh, the rest of the itineraries for Alaska, I'm also going to talk to you about some other cruise lines, some magnificent options that are out there. I think that the cruise lines truly are starting to think outside of the box a little bit for a long time and especially as we saw them moving along um, once the restart from COVID I think they were rather um, you know sticking what they with what they had done before and being conservative but it looks like with 2025 and late 2024 some of the cruises that we are seeing come out on different cruise lines are extraordinary something that they haven't done before or haven't done for a very long time before so I wanted to let you know about that. Now here's a really important thing for the discussion. This is my discussion section today and um, I want you to think about this. We've been talking an awful lot about the prices changes that have come out from Princess. There is so much passion about that. If we could maybe generate that much passion about things that really mattered in life, um, a lot of us do. Anyway, I'm just teasing you. But it has really been a big deal to a lot of people, and I don't belittle that at all. As I stand back, though, and look at where we are with Princess and with the other cruise lines, because everything is going up. If you have looked for a cruise lately, everything is going up. 
All right. So what I think it's really important to do every once in a while is take stock stand back and take stock of where we stand and look at what it's like to go on a cruise ship as a form of vacation and really I challenge you take out a piece of paper and write down all of the things that you love about going on a cruise and if you have not been on a cruise yet write down all of the things that you are looking forward to enjoying when you finally get to go on a cruise someday because everyone's life is different everybody has different demands on their time on their money on everything that they are and so um I want you to do that and think about that. And then um, I want you to also consider that when you go on other forms of vacations, whether you're going on a road trip, and especially if you're going on an all-inclusive vacation, which really when you're comparing a cruise vacation to another kind of vacation, truly going to an all-inclusive resort is what you would compare it with, except for you don't get to wake up in a different place every day and so, see so many cool places. But there are very nice things, of course, about going to an all-inclusive. Uh, the fees that are um, associated with all-inclusive resorts are a lot. They are very expensive. And I have noted as I have been looking at vacations and even just going to Las Vegas for a weekend and thinking you want to get to go swimming and out for dinner, those resort fees are way up. So I want you to kind of just consider um, where we are with cruising. It is still the funnest way to travel, at least for me, and it is just as economical as the other ways of travel. So I wanted to just put that out there, stand back a little bit, and realize that everything is really going great, and I look forward um, to sharing all of these experiences with all of you and looking forward to hearing about yours. So thanks for sticking with me today. Put what you think about that in the comments, because I read all the comments, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you again very much, and I surely we'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.